first of all, I'd like to thank um, the Trinidad Tobago Met Met Meteorological Service and all the, and the entire team at the Met Service, as well as the WMO and Mr. Christian, for working with us and us working with them. Really, it's a collaborative effort to sort of have this uh, workshop done within a, within a, re a reasonably short space of time. And, and I think I must also thank all of you guys for coming out because, you know, in this current uh, environment, we do have so much other things to do. Um, and therefore, it is really good. I, have, I just want to acknowledge as well my colleague from TIMA, Mr. Alan Stewart, and of course, his guest here this morning. Most of you all I know faces and, and whatnot, and I'm sure the introductions would, would occur um, as we go on. But um, I just want to make some opening remarks because in the context of what has been happening over the past week, I think it is very opportune that we have a, a discussion on a common alerting protocol. So one of the things that you have to look at as you go forward is, is how we as people, right, understand and understand risks. And that is the basis of what we're doing here today. We will have an early warning system integration platform that will pull all the people from the fellow with the donkey cart to the guy with the little radio on the coast looking at the little water that is coming, or the guy in the rum shop who lives next door to the river seeing that the water is coming up at that particular level, and he knows when that water reached there, there's going to be a flood. So in other words, then, it is to bring all of these people and all of these systems into some degree of conformity with a national relay, an authority to relay that to people at the right time, in the right manner. So hopefully today, at the end of it, we will let you know that <clears throat> the ODPM has been involved in developing and integrating the early warning system. We are very happy that we are going to be having a sort of discussion on our best practice to now to begin to take all of those from the coastal, from the indigenous to the, to the highly advanced early warning systems to the triggers that occurs in the little meters and PPGIS and ISL and all of those industries where you're looking at meters, when you're looking at the radar on aircraft and at civil aviation, whether you're looking at the weather on radar or what it, whatever the early warning system is. We are currently introducing legislation, which is best practice legislation, right? It is before the, 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 the Ministry of the Attorney General at this point in time. The drafters are on it. We have meetings very soon. And very soon there will be a collaboration to ensure that we have legislation that allows what I just said so we don't have chaos in terms of dissemination because it's long overdue. Trinidad Tobago is too advanced right now to be having the same repeated sort of nonsense as we go forward. <clears throat> Early warning points, for example, and I talked about the little indigenous people down in my arrow. We have the early warning points, which we have done with the UNDP and the, the, the um, Mayoro Corporation. As part of a climate change project, we are working with UNDP and the San Susi area as well to develop early warning systems there. We have a joint effort again with UNDP for capacity building, which is also working at looking at an early warning system integration capacity, especially with the, with the industries and some of the multinational corporations. Um, to put it simply, right, this is going to be very important. I would really look forward to the, the, at achieving the objectives of the workshop. I would like to thank Mr. Christian. I would like to thank my team. I would like to thank you. I hope that hopefully at the end of these uh, two days that you all would be able to, to get something. Currently, as, it, as we speak, we are discussing at the Office of the Prime Minister and the NOC, we are reformulating our crisis communication system. And a lot of that will be dependent on what is happening here uh, in terms of how we are going to use any systems as we go forward so that we can bring everything together, identify the authority or authorities responsible at that particular time for the relay of information to the public and try to see if we can now prevent panic and chaos because a lot of people may not understand the science. And it's something that I am very, very um, firm about. Right? There's now a time where we now have to look at capacity building we know what the science has to do. We know what the authorities for relay have to do. And we know what the people on the ground have to deliver. So there's a very clear, distinct organizational pattern in the entire protocol. But coming into that is a very strong, robust, well-tested, well-monitored platform that allows us to bring everything together, talk about it, and then send the public warning information system to the population so that we don't kill ourselves trying to get away 
because our amygdalas are very, very nice. We want to protect them. They are the ones that have brought us here without any technology so far. So now we need to kind of use technology to protect us as much as possible. All right? So thank you very much. So CAP, the Common Alerting Protocol, was developed to address the challenge of alerting, to enable a better approach than that crazy patchwork. How does CAP do that? It's really pretty simple. We just standardize the content of the alert message. CAP provides a format for a message designed for any and all media to communicate information about any kind of hazard situation. That message can be targeted to the public at large, but it can also be carried to an individual, maybe the operator of a dam, or to a set of people, like everybody in the mayor's office, or just emergency responders. Now, a format, a formatted message in, using a CAP standard can then be carried over television, radio, telephone, faxes, highway signs, email, and the web, it's all media. The message communicates about weather, fire, earthquakes, volcanoes, landslides, child abduction, disease outbreaks, air quality warnings, transportation problems, power outages, the list goes on. Without CAP, and this is the situation you probably still have, alerting systems have to deal with free text. A weather bulletin is the forecaster just writes up a message. Or you have a variety of different formats, forms, but each one is peculiar to that particular discipline. Here's what the volcanologist wants you to know. Here's what the seismologist wants you to know. As a result, having no standardized form, we have not had, and it was practically impossible to, implement all hazards, all media public alerting. That's where we go with Kevin. The World Meteorological Organization, in conjunction with the International Telecommunication Union, has sanctioned and developed a system better known as the CAP system in terms of an integrated approach to alerting. This system, as the name implies, is a common method or methodology in terms of getting information across, whereby persons can receive information in any nook and cranny within Trinidad and Tobago, whether it's by siren or by electric technology. I believe and I strongly believe then that the future of alerting in terms of Trinidad and Tobago should be by this international standard. Um, what is the state of alerting systems in Trinidad and Tobago? As the Office of Disaster Preparedness, that's National Coordinating Entity for Disaster Management in Trinidad and Tobago, we want to have a handle on ensuring that there is an integrated approach to doing this, this um, early warning systems in Trinidad and Tobago. It's part of the Sendai framework, that UN system, that uh, UN declaration that we all, Trinidad and Tobago, is a signatory to, and for which the Office of Disaster Preparedness is guided by, coupled with the fact that we have the regional framework, which is the um, Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, their strategic framework for 2014-2024. Um, they also have the elements of early warning systems in there, and it's an integral part of moving forward and towards saving lives. So the combined approach of your indigenous, I got a gut feeling, or this is what I'm seeing, the birds are flying, the animals are running, and the modern technologies, such as CAP, with widespread continuous education on the potential risk and hazards face can provide an end-to-end -end communication system. And this was Dr. Perez Calderon from the Asian Pacific 
disaster center that I quoted there. The post-Sendai discussion looked towards having whatever emergency warning system that we adopt ensure that it is end-to-end, -end, meaning that it, en it captures all the various elements that allow it to move from one end of the spectrum to the next, and that it be people-centered. I think um, CAP provide not just the, a, a tool and a mechanism or a medium by which this can be achieved, but also it creates standards, structure, a common platform that will allow players to be able to read the same text or read from the same book in a particular manner. In, in saying all this, I want to, you know, look at the, the people and the agencies behind this. You know, the World Meteorological Organization have played a major role and they play a very important role in the agenda of the UN towards disaster risk reduction. For us in this space, in the Caribbean, we have a responsibility in terms of our development and where we want to go as a people. To enjoy a particular type of living, I always speak to the oil in the coil. You, you know that Calypso, right? That how we look in so. You know, when we look at the infrastructure around us, it shows where we are in terms of our development of, as a people. You know, societies across the world through the generation, through time, have always seek out mechanism as to how they can protect themselves going forward. And that's the reason why safety comes first in everything that we do. And it's important that those of us who are assembled here today consider ourselves as the ambassadors, the people who will carry this message with a particular type of hype and also excitement. The kind of sustainability that you saw in the room today suggests that you want to be here. And it sells, it sells a particular image to those who we will have to take the message you know, along the way too. And therefore, I want to encourage all of us to be steadfast. If you notice, I paid a lot of attention to what is happening in the international um, playground, what is happening internationally. I always make the remark that we need, need to, you know, think global and act local. And in so doing, I think we are part of a stream, a world stream of activities that will not allow us to look as though we are just third-class citizens. But we are citizens of the world, and we need to fit in to the world agenda. And, and therefore, I want to thank you very much for bringing this level to our shores. And I want to thank the, my, my colleagues, those of us who have spent the time, you know, here, you know, those of us, some of us are very important people as well. CEOs, you know, rock back a little bit and take in the full session, carrying it to the end. So this is commendable, you know, and um, so I look forward to the implementation of this program. To these, we want to make sure that this protocol works for us and for the saving of souls, the saving of lives, protection of property. And therefore, I thank you very much for your, for your attending, first of all, and I hope that we'll be able to see a smooth implementation of CAP. I trust that we'll have the right heads to wear this, 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 this protocol. Thank you very much. <laughs>